My name is Chris Nelson with Headlight Revolution, and just like you, I want everything I own to be the best and brightest. People want the brightest headlights, the brightest fog lights, the brightest reverse lights, the brightest off-road lights. But how do you know which ones are truly brighter than others without testing? Well, CalCoast, a leading third-party testing laboratory, recently took all of these pods, plus some others from leading brands, and did their own tests to figure out which ones are brightest, which ones are actually SAE approved for use as fog lights on public roads, and they released a test. And that test result is linked in the description of this video, but I kind of wanted to see for myself how the brightness changes over time, because as you may know, when a light is on for a long time, especially little compact, high power pod lights like these, they get hot. They even get hot to the touch. And when they get hot, brightness decreases. So it's one thing to just turn the light on and measure the brightness and say, voila, there it is. But what if you're actually using them for a while? So we put these pod lights to the test and we measured temperature and brightness in Lux at one minutes, five minutes, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes. We used a digital thermal imager to figure out exactly how hot each pod gets over time at each of those intervals. And then we use a digital lux meter to test maximum lux at the same point. So the way we did the test is we set up one pod at a time, we powered it up, shined it at our testing wall, and at each one of those intervals, we took a measurement of heat and brightness. And at the end, we got a really good look at how these pods perform over time. If you wanna see the results for every single pod, keep watching, but let me break it down to the two most bright pods in the entire lineup. Number one, head and shoulders above the rest, was the Morimoto HXB wide beam pattern. This four banger pod blew everything else out of the water, even the brightest options from Dive Dynamics, the brightest options from Baja Designs, from Rigid Industries, everything that we tested, the four banger was the brightest option by a lot, but not only just at the one minute mark, even at the 60 minute mark of continuous use, as it dropped in brightness, so did all the other pods, but it was still brighter than all of the other options. But the second brightest option on the table was the Diodynamics SS3 Max. At the one minute mark and at the 60 minute mark, it was the second brightest pod light that we tested in the wide beam variety. Right off the bat, the four banger HXB wide beam pattern pod light created 6,200 maximum lux at 91 degrees Fahrenheit. And the second brightest pod that we tested was the Diodynamics SS3 Max with their SAE Fog wide beam pattern coming in at 4,500 maximum lux at 97 degrees. So right off the bat, there's a huge difference in brightness and these are the two brightest options. You'll see in a minute that the rest of them don't even hold a candle to these two pods. So it's quite impressive that they're even this bright. And here you can see how at five minutes and 30 minutes, the brightness decreases, the temperature goes up, and then at 60 minutes, the four banger HXB was at 4,500 lux, which is the same brightness that the Diodynamics SS3 Max started at. The four banger reached a temperature of 221 degrees and experienced a 27% decrease in brightness from one minute to 60 minutes of operation. The Diodynamics Max reached 3,300 lux at a temperature of 211 degrees, which is also a 27% decrease in brightness over 60 minutes of runtime. If you're still curious how the other pods stack up, check this out. Surprisingly, the third brightest pod light in this lineup was the entry-level pod from Morimoto, the four banger NCS. Right off the bat, it kicked out 3,400 maximum lux at a temperature of 77 degrees. And by 60 minutes of continuous runtime, still had 3,100 maximum lux at a temperature of only 150 degrees. That's only an 8.8% .8 decrease in brightness, and it shows how the lower power pods lose less brightness over time because they're just not getting as hot. That's a constant theme through this entire test. The lower powered pods, like the entry-level Morimoto 4Banger NCS, the Diodynamic Sport, and the pods from Rigid Industries, don't draw as much power, they don't make as much light, and therefore, over time, the decrease in brightness is less. And the higher power pods, like Baja Designs, Diodynamics, and Morimoto, 
have more brightness decrease over time because they make more heat. The fourth brightest pot in this test was the Baja Designs Pro. At one minute of testing, it made 3,200 maximum lux at 95 degrees. And after 60 minutes of continuous runtime, it dropped 25% down to 2,400 maximum lux at a temperature of 182 degrees. The Diodynamics SS3 Pro came in at 3,100 maximum lux after one minute and dropped 19% down to 2,500 maximum lux at 60 minutes, coming in at 208 degrees. The Rigid Industries D-Series Pro SAE Fog came in at 2,800 maximum lux at one minute of runtime and 2,400 maximum lux at 148 degrees after 60 minutes of runtime. That's a 14% decrease in brightness. The Diodynamics SS3 Sport came in at 2,500 maximum lux at one minute and 2,500 lux at 60 minutes. The SS3 Sport, which is diode's entry-level pod, was very efficient thermally and did not see a decrease in brightness at all. The Baja Designs SAE Wide also saw a 0% decrease in brightness over time because it just doesn't create that much light or heat. Right off the bat, it created 600 maximum lux at 89 degrees, and after 60 minutes, it still created 600 maximum lux at 177 degrees. There's two ways you can look at this test. Either take my word for it because we did it right here for you in a way that matters to me, or download the test results directly from Calcos. We'll link it in the description below. And when you're deciding which pod lights to get, for most people, brightness is the most important thing. But if you have a need for the least amount of heat, you can also make a decision based on that. If you like this kind of content, of course, please like and subscribe, but also go check out our other videos where we talk about other types of off-road lighting products. And if there's a question that you have, we do answer comments. If you wanna see a different kind of video, post it below and we'll see what we can do next time. To find out everything that fits your car or truck, go to headlightrevolution.com, enter your year, make, and model, and you'll see everything from headlights, off-road lights, fog lights, tail lights, reverse lights, and more.